Hey everybody, this is Jeff from Building Aquarium Workshop. In today's episode, we are back to our 40 gallon breeder reef tank that we have put in here a bicolor angel. Today we're dealing with the Mijano anemones. Those are those nuisance anemones that you see. You can get closer, you can see some of them on the grid here, on the crate, egg crate, and they're on the rock as well. Now, this bicolor angel, he's supposed to be able to um, eat these that's part of his diet the Mijano anemones and we put him in here a couple days ago and he's a really healthy young specimen so hopefully that's gonna be the case we've noticed him so far that as you can see right now he's actually nipping on the Mijanos you can't really see it but he's nipping on the grid he's been nipping on the rock I saw him earlier uh, nibbling and even nibbling at the pink pulsating zinnia there he is right there um, and so he's going to town on stuff in here. Doesn't look like he cares about the blue mushroom. Um, we're gonna follow up. We're gonna let you guys know, let you folks know that if this works, okay? Um, I've heard of other things like uh, using the pickled lime, which is the caulkwasser, calcium hydroxide. I've heard, you know, mixed reviews on that, uh, that it works, it doesn't work. I haven't seen a lot of good follow-up videos to know that that does work. So any, uh, on the reef forums, the bicolor angel is supposedly uh, the best way to get rid of these Mijano anemones. And you know what? That's what this episode is about in the future episode. We'll definitely do a follow-up if as soon as we notice that there's a lot in here. So as soon as you notice a lot of them are gone, we will definitely uh, follow up with you guys and do another video showing, hey, this is working. And definitely once they are all gone, uh, then that'll be a great video as well. This is a second video on an update video on this bicolor angel in a reef tank. Now the bicolor angels, uh, not a reef tank approved fish. However, and I've had this guy for a little over two weeks and I have rarely fed him anything. Um, I think he had a couple of brine shrimp. He might've had a little bit of formula that was on my fingers left over from feeding the other tank. And that's, that's it. I purposely don't feed him because he is constantly nibbling. Uh, I've seen him nibble um, on a on the Xenia, and you know what? It looks like uh, in the beginning I was getting a little skeptical about whether or not he was touching. Uh, there he is, the Mijano um, anemones, but he is, and this is how it's kind of working out, which is great. Um, the Mijano anemones, the, the tank lights have been on for two hours now, and they were thriving. They were really big. In fact, I saw one earlier. Let's see if I can find one that's doing well, but they're not. Um, if you can see right there, okay, so let me get my finger in there, boop, right there. You see that one? That one's probably doing the best out of all of them, and that's not doing well at all. And what's happening is, is he must be nibbling on them, because if you see more of these um, Mijanos, uh, anemones, even on the rock there, okay, there's, uh, oops, sorry, there's one right there on the rock, okay, and they are shriveling, they're just dying off, so he must be nibbling them to the point, it looks like he's going to go up there, and I think he's also nibbling, yeah, he's nibbling maybe on some paleozoanthids that I have, they have not been happy either, um, uh, incidentally, he doesn't seem to like these, though, these zoanthids right here, um, he doesn't do anything really with the blue mushroom either. He doesn't seem to care about the blue mushroom. Um, but yeah, he seems to like the Xenia and he also likes um, the uh, some of these zoanthids in here. So uh, hopefully we can endure and we'll get rid of the Mijanos. Uh, and, you know, I have some of these zoanthids in the, in the other reef tank. So if he does eat them, I'll still have them available. And so those and and actually some aptasias, which you just don't see them. I'm not sure if he's he must be doing something with the aptasias, too, because they were huge. And if you watch my other videos, you see the aptasias in here, especially on, underneath this rack here by the heater. And I, I don't even see him anymore. So maybe he's eating the aptasias as well. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be awesome? So anyway, uh, I will do, I am not going to say this is a success until I see the Mijano anemone gone. And once this is that part three of our getting rid of the Mijano anemone by using a bicolor angel. Okay, so today it's March 18th and uh, the lights have been on for about 15, 20 minutes. So it's still, still we can look at the gridding and look at the rocks and look for these Mijano anemones. Um, we, if you've seen the, the first two parts, uh, obviously you've seen that um, we bought a bicolor angel to get rid of the Mijano anemone, and uh, he surprisingly got rid of uh, the Aptasia, except for one here. There's one little 
That's actually a huge one right there in the middle of the screen. The only reason why it's still alive, I thought it was gone, was because of I took the, the rack out and put it in the tank below, thinking that, you know, this is clean. He was picking on those um, uh, pallies right there, and so I was like, you know, I, I don't want them gone. So I decided to take the rack out, but then I realized as I looked in there, there was one huge aptasia. Okay, but he will, I'm sure, eat it. Now, with respect to the Mijano anemones, he's done a wonderful job. And you can see on the gridding, there is um, hardly any you can see. He got them down to a countable amount, if you will. I, I put him in here, the part one was February 7th, okay? So he's been in here now for a month and 11 days, okay? So he's been here quite some time. He has become quite friendly. I mean, you can put your, tank, your hand in there and a lot of times he, does, he doesn't even care. He'll just still be out there um, nibbling. And he, you know, he's done a wonderful job so that he didn't quite get rid of the, um, the Majano anemone, but he, the, he got them down to the point where they were countable to like maybe less than 30, okay? And that's good because there was probably hundreds of them here. And I can't blame him. He probably got tired of eating Majano anemone, you know? I mean, he's been in here a while. There was hundreds of them. So uh, I, I say that it's a success even though um, there was a few. And so there's, you can see right here, there's a Majano um, right there. Okay, and what I ended up doing is I ended up, uh, uh, this rock was behind the gridding, he couldn't get to some of them. Uh, the gridding was covering them up in little tight spaces, so I brought this rock out. So this rock has been out here now for a couple weeks, but um, what I've done is I went ahead and um, I went ahead and shot these with the Aptasia X. Uh, and I will start physically removing any. There's like, you can see one there on the ground. Okay, let's zoom right into it. There's one right there. And since there wasn't that many, I was able to actually shoot them all and just kind of put, put it on really pasty. So um, I have a feeling that some of these will survive, but I'm gonna probably frag them off the rock, so to speak, if they're on a rock or if they're on the grid, start pulling that pieces of grid out. And I, I mean, it's, it's doable now, okay? So I would still say it's a success. And I was fortunate that this bicolor angel um, really didn't eat too much else because I didn't really have much else for him or her to eat. Uh, you know, you got choice of uh, a couple of zoanthids or pallies, uh, blue mushroom, and this um, pingzinia. But anyway, so this is uh, what I have to report, and uh, I don't think I'm going to do a part four. Uh, I'm just going to call it Mr. Success. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, bicolor angel back because he isn't reef approved, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, because really, you know, I don't think he's going to do much more good for me in here since I shot the Majanos to the point where they're, as you can see, they, this is what they look like. This is one of the biggest ones that there was. So we'll go back to that one. That's one of the biggest ones and it's uh, it's all shriveled up, not happy. And what I'll do is I'll just frag that piece of rock and so and remove it from the aquarium and uh, dry it out and that's it. And I thought about what's left to do now is work on some of this bubble algae, which I haven't done anything now for a couple of weeks with bubble algae. Usually I'm in there every week. I've just had a busy week and I'm in there getting all this bubble algae, you know, maintaining it, just removing, removing, being really careful too with it. And it's paid off because uh, they haven't gotten so huge that they've busted on their own. There's nothing to really bust them. So they're just kind of sitting there. And oh, there's that piece right there, if you remember from the part two. So there's a, a couple of Majanos on there that are just not, not doing well because I shot them. So uh, again, with the Aptasia X. And oh. so hopefully this information was useful uh, for those of you who have the Majano anemone. If it's a really, really bad infestation, um, obviously you can remove them, but that takes time. Um, so the Bicolor Angel might be a good option for you if you don't have too many nice corals that he's gonna eat. But if you're like me and you don't have that many corals, um, or you're able to remove the nice ones, then I definitely highly recommend getting the Bicolor Angel to remove the Majano and also Aptasia. He did a wonderful job with the Aptasia, okay? So, all right, so if you liked the episode, please give us a like, and if you wanna see more of these, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a great day.